Chinese officials are forcing people to get vaccinated, even though Beijing says it's not required. Residents who don't want to get the shot may face retaliation from officials. Video shows a group of authorities forcing a farmer away from his field to get the jab. Heavy rain strike in Hunan province. The downpour led to a road collapse there. Beijing is keeping an eye on celebrities and their online fans. That's as the regime clamps down on a number of domestic business sectors. A move insiders say carries political goals. And counterfeit products from China surface in the U.S. Customs and Border Protection sees nearly 40,000 fake designer products from China in just a month. Goods that would be worth $50 million if genuine. Welcome to China In Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. While Beijing has said China's vaccination program is purely voluntary, there are reports that local officials are using coercive measures to force vaccinations on people, including the elderly, among them a man over 90 years old. Reports of forced vaccination attempts are surfacing in China. As of last week, local officials are said to be using coercive measures to meet Beijing's vaccination goal. Even elderly citizens and those with disabilities can't avoid it. In northern China's Henan province, a resident tells NTD that local officials tried to force the shot on her mother-in-law. To protect her identity, we gave her a pseudonym. But China's National Health Commission has repeatedly noted that the country's vaccination program is voluntary. Chen says her mother-in-law is in her 70s and doesn't want to get vaccinated because of her already poor health. Yet local authorities came to their home and pulled the woman out of the house to get the shot. She got away from them, but officials then started threatening the family. Chen says she has disabilities herself, but after the incident, she had to stay with her mother-in-law at home, fearing the officials would return. In southeastern China's Fujian province, a resident says his friend had a stroke 10 years ago and could barely walk. Yet he too was made to get the vaccine. This is very dangerous. It could cost him his life. He couldn't even walk to the hospital, the two or 300 meters to get there. Jin says his friend's 93-year-old father was no exception. Being so old, it's better to not get the shot. He's had high blood pressure for 40 or 50 years. For Jin himself, local officials also came to his home. He explained his high blood pressure condition, but officials took little notice. Jin was made to get the shot. In other provinces, netizens report that in one case, local police falsely accused a person of taking drugs. That's after the person refused to get vaccinated. Beijing still says getting the shot is not required, but some incidents on the local level seem to suggest otherwise. A video circulating online shows what look like plainclothes authorities speaking to a local farmer, telling him he must get vaccinated on site. The farmer refused to get inoculated, but the man forced the issue. <laughs> The farmer later tried to get away, but the men wouldn't let him go. Chinese officials are ramping up their pandemic strategy efforts to combat the latest outbreaks. Shanghai seems to have a new tactic. In a video circulating online, a local hospital stamped patients who passed their health code inspection. In China, people are signed two codes. One is meant to indicate vaccination status. The other indicates the risk of having contracted the virus. People entering public venues are now asked to display both codes. According to local media reports, due to concerns for safety, the hospital not only checks both codes, but also stamps patients' arms before admitting them to the hospital. The report says the stamp, which reads dual code verified, tells hospital staff that both codes have been checked for that person. But Chinese netizens commented online, saying the stamp looks like something familiar, saying it's like a slaughterhouse stamping a pig. Why are Chinese officials coercing people into getting vaccinated? A resident in Shanghai City says he believes people are profiting off it. He told the Epoch Times he saw a document recently that indicates that the authorities, hospitals, police stations and neighborhood managers are dividing revenue among them. That's related to increasing vaccination rates. He said he believes the money comes from medical insurance funds.
U.S.-based human rights defender Hua Haifeng pointed out another potential problem. He said some countries may have claimed their population is larger than it is, so they could get more benefits from certain programs. But higher-level authorities have since ordered a certain amount of people to get vaccinated. And since the counties don't have as many people as they claimed, they have to try harder to meet the new requirements. Now to central China, where Henan province is still experiencing heavy rains. Parts of the province saw up to five inches of rainfall in recent days, and dozens of reservoirs there are starting to overflow. On Monday, the province's weather observatory issued a warning for more heavy rain. In Song County, work and school have been suspended. Some locals in Jinzhou City say the rain is as heavy as it was in July, during the area's massive floods. But unlike last time, the city's subway system is now taking precautions. Locals explain the transit system will stop operating in the case of heavy rain. Entrances to the city's Jingguang Tunnel are also closed and will be guarded during the dangerous conditions. In other areas inside the province, inclement weather started over the weekend. In Xing'an County, after rain subsided on Sunday, a section of road stretching hundreds of feet suddenly collapsed. An online video captured the terrifying sight. <laughs> Chinese celebrities and online fans are finding themselves facing the wrath of Beijing, with social media accounts being shut down and celebrities disappearing from the Internet. Insiders say the move could be politically driven. Beijing has declared war on idol worship, part of a broader crackdown on Chinese celebrities. On Friday, Chinese regulators issued a list of notices. One of the new rules bans online lists ranking celebrities by popularity. The list goes on to outline nine other steps to control celebrity fan culture, which it describes as having become chaotic. The following day, another government body under the Chinese regime said it would crack down on what it calls the shocking behavior of Chinese celebrities. Last week, one of China's most prominent stars, Vicky Zhao Wei, was scrubbed from the Internet while another celebrity actor, Zheng Shuang, was fined $46 million for a tax scandal. Insiders say the clampdown on celebrities appears to carry a political purpose for Beijing. To clean up public opinion, a strictly controlled speech before the CCP's 20th Party Congress. The next Chinese Communist Party leadership succession is scheduled for 2022. It marks a critical time for party leader Xi Jinping, as it will determine whether he'll remain in power for a third term. And Gao says the first step to ensure that happens is by shaping public opinion. And that's done through regulating pop culture. The entertainment industry is like a wind indicator, which will have a great impact on the society. The incidents follow previous clampdowns on China's big tech and private sectors. In a recent speech, leader Xi Jinping called for what he called common prosperity. The rhetoric appears to be a new attack on China's wealthy, and this time it's taking aim at China's celebrities. A Communist Party insider says the effort was spurred on by Beijing's inner financial crisis. To protect his identity, we changed his voice and referred to him by his surname. The celebrities have so many fans. They have huge advertising revenue, etc. From them, that's where Beijing can get a large sum of money to solve the central financial crisis. Chinese celebrities have increasingly been targeted in recent weeks. Among them, superstar singer-actor Chris Wu was arrested and detained following rape allegations. Wu is a Canadian citizen. Since then, his internet presence has been largely removed while a Chinese TV anchor, Chen Feng, was also accused of rape in one of the country's latest sexual assault scandals. Another star, Zheng Jahan, he's being blamed for insulting the Chinese people after posing for photos at a war-linked memorial site in Japan. His films and TV series have likewise been taken down online. The Chinese Communist Party's current action gives the signal that authorities are ripping off wealth from the celebrities, first done by creating public opinions through this kind of national hatred towards them. Then the central government will issue them a huge fine. But Mr. Chun says Beijing's strategy comes with an exception. For members of the regime's leadership, the problem isn't that the celebrities are billionaires. It's about the fact that there are billionaires other than them. The CCP dares to touch them? 
It's just a case of hurting a group without power or influence. The action against celebrities comes on the heels of regulators targeting other groups, like education, tech and business. A commentary on the issue appeared in multiple Chinese state-run media sources Sunday. It describes Beijing's recent clampdown on various industry sectors as a profound revolution, adding that those who stand in the way will be left behind. According to the commentary, it's a sign China's returning of the essence of socialism. But on Chinese social media platforms, some comments compare the crackdown to the Cultural Revolution in the 1960s, a decade of social turmoil where arts and culture were restricted to promoting party propaganda. China has launched a multi-pronged attack on its tech companies, and it's threatening to curb their ability to list in the U.S. The regime wants to regulate companies' use of algorithms, sidelining a cloud computing businesses in a major city. Only a few weeks ago, DD Global staged a $4.4 billion IPO in New York. Now it looks like the listing by the ride-hailing giant could be the last of its kind. A Reuters source says China is set to ban internet companies whose data poses national security risks from listing overseas. Beijing said last month that it planned to strengthen supervision of all firms listed offshore. Now the source says all internet firms wanting a foreign listing will have to apply for review by the powerful Cyberspace Administration of China. That could prevent a swathe of firms from holding IPOs. Though there was no comment from the CAC, and the plan is reportedly just one of the options being considered. Even so, the news is just the latest twist in China's crackdown on its tech giants. It has been targeting allegations of unfair competition and lax data handling. Firms including Didi, Alibaba and Tencent have seen their share prices roiled as a result. The Chinese communist regime is barring those under the age of 18 from playing video games more than three hours a week. Beijing says the move will stop video game addiction. The restrictions announced on Monday control the days and times when Chinese youth can play video games. It's a huge hit to the global gaming industry, which caters to tens of millions of young players in China. Chinese regulators say gaming companies will be barred from providing services to minors outside designated hours and must put name verification systems in place. This further tightens 2019 rules that restricted video gameplay. Gaming companies could sense a crackdown was coming after Chinese state media criticized gaming addiction among young people. A number of Chinese sectors in China are facing regulatory pressure, and the list seems to be getting longer. From education to real estate, platform economy to online finance and cryptocurrency, plus tech companies eyeing IPOs and even cloud computing. The clampdown appears to have reached nearly every area. Among the latest to be hit, the entertainment industry, video game companies and celebrity fan clubs. So who's next? The private funds industry is now headed to the chopping block. China's top securities regulator pledged Monday to tighten scrutiny on mismanaged private funds, totaling over $9 trillion. According to the chairman of the country's Securities Regulatory Commission, the effort aims to promote high-quality growth of China's capital market. Beijing has been advocating the so-called prevention of disorderly expansion of capital since late last year. That marks the tightening control on big techs and private education firms, saying to deal with their monopolistic and unfair competition behaviors. China's biggest bad debt manager, Hua Rong, has posted a record loss for last year of nearly $16 billion. And the company's debt is 1,300 times its equity capital. NTD's Patrick Hayden has more. A major Chinese asset manager has revealed a record loss of almost $16 billion. China Huarong's long-delayed results also show it's holding far less capital than it should be by law. If a company delays its filing, it's a sign that it's, it's a conspicuous red flag that all is not well. Eight months is, is frankly unconscionable. The losses hit shareholders hard, slashing their equity by nearly 85%. Also, the company is heavily in debt. Its debt-to-equity capital ratio, or leverage, was huge at more than 1,300 times. And I think if memory serves, when Lehman Brothers went bankrupt in 2008, I think they were levered 28 times. So this is this is monstrous. However, in whatever way you look at it, it's just beyond absurd. 
it's a, it's early days, but it could be that Huarong is is maybe the pin that bursts the Chinese market bubble. Huarong has 238 billion in different liabilities. That includes more than 20 billion of offshore bonds. So the the interesting thing about this this, this uh, Huarong business is that they've clearly already been bailed out once by the Chinese state. I mean, it looks frankly as if they're going to get bailed out again. Earlier this month, the indebted company informed investors of a state-backed rescue plan led by the Citigroup Corp. Huarong underwent rapid expansion under its previous chairman, Lai Xiaomin. He was executed in January following one of China's most high-profile corruption cases. Huarong executives said Monday the company would decide whether to roll out a refinancing plan for dollar-denominated debt. Patrick Hayden, NTD News. The editor-in-chief of U.S.-based pro-democracy magazine Beijing Spring says Beijing is taking money from private companies to rescue state-run companies like Huarong. Jack Ma's Alibaba is one of these private firms. But this is not sustainable because there will come a time when these companies have no more funds remaining. China is still trafficking large amounts of counterfeit products into the U.S. Over the past month, U.S. Customs and Border Protection in Los Angeles seized nearly 40,000 fake designer products from China. The products include handbags, shoes, wallets, belts, and other items. They bore imitation logos from Gucci, Dior, Chanel, and Louis Vuitton. The CBP says the merchandise would have had a combined retail price of over $50 million if it was genuine. CBP's port director at the Los Angeles International Airport says counterfeit goods unfairly compete with legitimate products and reduce the incentives to innovate, both in the United States and abroad. China remains the primary source of fake products and pirated goods seized. That's according to the CBP's 2020 statistics. Chinese-made counterfeit goods seized last year would have been worth nearly $660 million if they had been genuine. They accounted for 51 percent of the value of all seizures that year. Fake products from China also include counterfeit COVID-19 vaccination cards, fake FBI badges and even fake U.S. currency. It's been four years since Chinese authorities arbitrarily arrested a Taiwanese citizen. But Taiwan has not forgotten him. A Taiwanese rights group is calling for his release on a day dedicated to the victims of enforced disappearances. NTD's Don Ma has more. August 30th is the International Day of the Victims of Enforced Disappearances. And in Taiwan, human rights groups are calling on the Chinese Communist Party to release a Taiwanese citizen who was arrested and temporarily disappeared in China four years ago. His name is Li Mingzhe. He is a supporter of rights activists in mainland China. Before he was arrested, he would send human rights books to his friends in China. Some books he sent were against the CCP's narrative, including one book that talks about the truth of the Cultural Revolution. In 2017, he entered China on a flight from Taiwan to Macau. Chinese authorities quickly arrested him on arrival. He was charged with so-called subverting state power and sentenced to five years in prison. The state of his health is currently unknown. In 2017, the Supreme People's Court of China labeled this case as one of the top 10 criminal cases of the People's Court. At a demonstration, the Taiwan Association for the Promotion of Human Rights called on China to release Li Mingzhe. Quickly release Li Mingzhe. Recognize your criminal actions. Will not give up and yield. It is a very inhumane atrocity. Why do we need to pay attention to Li Mingzhe? Because this is what the CCP fears most. The Secretary General of the Rights Group says others like Li Mingzhe have also been arbitrarily arrested. Not only Li Mingzhe, but also Li Mengju and Zhang Dingban has been arrested. The CCP government violated human rights by forcibly disappearing them and then depriving them of personal freedom. They were not given a fair trial. They may be tortured in prison and their health may be in danger. Our last special report on Friday incorrectly stated which country has sovereignty over certain areas in Asia. India and China both lay claim to territory in the region, including Aksai Chin and parts of Pakistan and Minister Kashmir. We regret the error. And that's all for today's China in Focus. Thanks for watching and see you tomorrow.